You are listening to Let's Talk Tea Podcast with your favorite boss, babe. Yep, Shani Summon Godfrey. This podcast is designed to transform, elevate, and empower you to build your legacy that lasts. I'm not all here by myself, y'all. I am joined by thousands of bosses across the globe right here on Let's Talk Tea Podcast. We are here for no other reason but to help you build your legacy with passion. We sweating over here. Good morning, good evening, good night, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Let's Talk Tea Podcast with your favorite host, Shani Simon Godfrey. I am joined by a phenomenal woman of God tonight. And y'all, listen, she is a, pr- a prophet, a prayer warrior. She is an entrepreneur. She is a motivational speaker. There is just so much different stripes on her hat of many colors, and I'm excited to share all of those with you today. So, woman of God, please introduce yourself to us. Good evening. I am Prophetess Nicole Bryant. I'm coming from Brooklyn, New York. I want to say hello to everyone, and thank you so much um, for having me on your podcast on today. Oh, Prophet, it's just an honor to have you. Listen, y'all, one thing about our amazing guests, they are so humble with their their work that they're doing for the kingdom of God. That's why I'm here, right? She is also an author. So, Prophet, tell us about your book. Okay, so I have been co-authors in three books so far. Um, one um, was a long time ago, and my chapter was Why Me? Oh, my gosh. And the thing is, I was prophesied so many times about books, and I just, you know, kind of like, what do I have to write? And right. God gave me um, a connection. It, it just so happened that someone called me and was like, someone is having a book, and it was all women, and it's just, it just fell into line. And then the next book that I was in was a prayer book, and it was a class. I was in a prayer class, and the teacher decided to put a book together from all the students. And we came together, and we wrote um, a prayer, and we put it inside of the book. My last book that I just did, not my last, but the last, the last one I did just now, was um, Birth in the Dreamer in You um, the, with Dr. Kishma George, and it was 13 co-authors. Um, that just came out this September, um, and I'm just so happy to say that two of the books, they went Amazon bestsellers in three categories, um, and I'm just super excited, and I'm, I have another book that's going to come out. I'm co-authoring in another book that will come out very soon, and then I am also birthing my own personal book in 2022. So, um, And I've been in tons of magazine articles um, and it's just so phenomenal because sometimes we don't even realize that we have these gifts that God gives us and we don't, we're not using them. And then somebody could just come and just pull them right out of us and we didn't even know they were there. Because if anyone would have asked me about being an author, I would have said, not me, I don't do that. <laughs> but I'm now I'm just like into the mode of writing and I have so much um, stuff that I'm, I know that's going to be birthed in the you know, years to come and I'm just super excited with what God is doing and with me being an author. And you know Actually, and I have three books coming out in September I mean in twenty twenty two. I'm sorry. Um, uh-huh. another class I'm in where we're collaborating and doing another prayer book. It's part two of the first one. So yeah, I just forgot about that one. So yeah, so it'll be three books in um twenty twenty two so far, let's put it that way. I don't know what God is going to do. <laughs> Does things suddenly, and I know 2022 is going to be a suddenly year, so I'm not putting limitations on God. Amen. So, Prophet, as for the ones that's listening, and and you already said, if somebody asks you if, you know, a few years ago, would you be doing this? Would you be writing? What advice would you give them if they're in that place? I want to say be led of God. Because like I said, it was a prophecy given to me when I heard it. Now, I trust the woman of God. The woman of God that gave me the prophecy, she is a sound voice of God, and I, and I trust her. And it was just like so out of the blue for me. You know, we can look at ourselves and be like, me? What do I? And I literally said, what do I have to put in the book? And, and I tell you, that same day, the same, it was the, the same night, I went to get my phone, and I had a message, and the message was like, hey, I need you to call me because my friend is doing a book collaboration, and I think this would be a good fit for you. I was so blown away. 
So I'm going to say follow God. A lot of times we have giftings and we don't really know they're there. Use the giftings. Once, once they're triggered, once they're shown to you, once you realize you have them, use them because I can promise you there's someone out there that needs it. It doesn't even have to be a book. It can be other things, but it's not only for you. It's for someone else. It's always to help someone else, yes. the gift that we have. Yes, and that's, that's, a powerful, that's a powerful advice. That's a powerful advice because oftentimes we struggle when we think it's about us, but we free up when we know it's not about us, right, that somebody actually needs the things that we're doing, and that's awesome. Prophetess, you have your, ra- your own radio show. Tell us about that. I do. That's another thing. I tell you, God is just so amazing. And, um, you know, I have been prophesied about TV. And I'm like, TV? I don't know about TV, right? And so happened um, this this year, I'm, I'm in a part of a women's group, and they post a lot of flyers, you know, anything you have going on, any business you have, you know, we posted and this radio station podcast, slash podcast had came across as a flyer, and I'm telling you, it was like the heavens opened up to me. And I was like, wow, okay, God. I said, what are you saying? You know, so I pondered with it a couple of days, and I prayed, and it just kept falling in my spirit to start the radio station, um, the radio show, not a station. Yeah. So I, co- I got the information, and it was very, you know, in my lane. And so I said, okay, God, I'm going to step out. I don't know nothing about radio. You know, I don't know how this works, but I got a coach. The, the, the flyer, you know, that I've seen, the, the lady, she's a coach. She coaches into things. She, you know, she tells us what to do. If we have questions, always can reach out to her. And so I did that, and I have been on the radio almost one full year. I tell you, I get stats at the end of every month. My radio station is blowing my mind because it's people in Asia, Africa, the the Caribbean, the Bahamas and Barbados, like they are really giving me high numbers. The United States, of course, but when you see countries like Africa and Russia, I'm like, Russia, you know, it is really amazing. I have over a thousand um, podcast um, um, downloads, you know, and I'm just like, wow, like, can I name a thousand people, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, God is just doing some amazing things. And my, my radio station, I, I stemmed it off of my nonprofit, which my nonprofit stemmed off of a conference that God has given me to give for women. And it's called Ish- the Radio station is called It's Your Time, Pushing Forward with Nicole. It's not about me. It's not about me. My radio station is for people that are doing things that's positive, whether you have a business, an organization, a nonprofit, you, you have your own line of whatever it is. Um, you know, you've been through some kind of struggle or turmoil, and you, you have something positive to say that came out of it that can help someone else, that's what my radio station is used for, you know, mm-hmm. is to, to help someone else. Because, so, you know, a lot of times we think we're the only one. When, when we're in a situation, we think it's only us. We don't realize that there's so many other people going through, not it might be at the same time, but somebody else has went through or going through what you've been through. And if you can give a positive outlook of how to get through it, is going to help someone. So that's what I use the radio show for. Um, and I let people know, like, you know, we, we all are not going to be on Channel 7 News or Oprah Winfrey. But listen, if somebody in Russia can hear your story mm-hmm. and you never thought that, you know, you only thought your own community or your, you know, your church base or your family was going to hear it, and now someone in Russia is hearing it and it's going to help someone in Africa or someone in the Caribbean islands that you might never meet, but just because you stepped out in faith and you shared your story, and you know how the Bible says we overcome by our testimony, yeah. listen, then it's your time. You know, I use that platform for that. Not about me at all. It's really to help those that might feel that they don't have a voice somewhere else, you know. So I give them that platform to have that voice. So, Prophetess, 
do you when you started your show were you nervous were you afraid because some people they are afraid they're terrified right of doing something like that so explain that process how do you work through those those emotions so nervous is not the word <laughs> you know or, oh my god it was like I, I, I was like kind of lost for words you know, now it comes a little bit more natural, but in the beginning, I was really nervous doing the interviews, and I don't like um, rehearsed interviews, so I don't want to send out yeah. an email with, with questions. You know, I don't want to do that, because when you do that, people get a chance to, like, rehearse what they're going to say. I want everything to literally come from you, you know. If you call it on the spot, I guess that's what you call it, on the spot interview, but yeah. when, you, when, it, when it's you, you should be able to talk about whatever you're doing or whatever you've been through. It shouldn't have to be that you have to sit there and think about it, you know. And so I, I do on-the-spot interviews. You know, I really don't have questions. I just, whatever God leads me to say or, you know, um, if I know the person a little bit, something about them through a bio or something, then I just, you know, really grasp on those things. And I really want the person to share their heart with what they're doing, you know, with whatever they're doing or whatever, the, you know, they're bringing to the station. So that's really how the radio is. But, yeah, I was super nervous. I was like, OMG. Like, and then when I heard myself the first time, I was like, oh, my God, I sound like a little girl. I was like, people going to think this child is playing on the radio, you know. <laughs> but to God be all the glory, you know. It just to me, my voice don't sound like my voice that it is on the radio. I don't. That's to me. I don't know. I never really asked anyone, but that's just my own personal thoughts. We are all but yes, you, and, you, and you just step out. You know, you just you just know it's something that, that's going to help somebody, and you just do it. Basically, is there's no? I, I don't know what else to say. Like how I did it, I yes. just stepped out and did it. Yes. And that's what it jumped first, right? That's how it's, that's what it's about. We have to just pray and just go forth and jump. <laughs> if we think about mm -hmm. it, we won't ever get it done. So that's that's some good advice right there. Just get her done. But you are also an instructor. Tell us about yeah. that. You are an instructor and a cosmetology instructor. Tell us yeah. about how it is. You have a radio show. You are author. You know, tell us about that process, and here you are, <laughs> a college instructor, which is Let awesome. Let me tell you, my gosh, um, let's go back from the beginning of my cosmetology. Um, I, had, I was working in corporate America in the garment district. So I was working in, like, I saw all the stars. I worked down the hall from Puffy. I was across the street from J-Lo. Like, I was in these areas with all of these stars. I would see them every day, you know. And sometimes um, the company that I worked for, I'd worked in numerous companies in that area, but the company I worked for, sometimes I would have to actually go deliver stuff at J-Lo um, at her office. So anyway, um, and my job ch filed Chapter 11. You know, in that business, in the corporate America, um, it is very up and down. The Barmy District is very up and down. You could get awesome jobs. You could get paid very well, but you could have a job today and they're out of business tomorrow, literally. Wow. And doing that, um, the company that I was working for at the time went chapter, filed Chapter 11. And I was like, you know, I just was like, what am I going to do? Like, I'm tired of this back and forth, back and forth, you know, thing or whatever. And so I – um went to school. I went to school. I was just not so long ago homeless, you know, um, lost a job, getting unemployment, you know, um, some unemployment. I went on public assistance for a little bit, and I went to school. And, and um, not knowing the system, because I didn't know about public assistance, I didn't know that they could pay for me, so I was paying out of pocket. <laughs> you know, I was paying for my mm -hmm. unemployment money, I'm yeah. like, God, help me. And I went to school, and I, when I went to school, because of situations, God graced me to be able to go to school because I needed a co-signer, and my mother did not want a co-sign for me. And so happened, one of my childhood friends' mother worked at the school, and she helped get me 
Um, she spoke to the owner, and he helped get me the co-signer that I needed through his company. And I went to school, and I worked in the office with him sometimes um, while I was there. And years later, graduated, worked in a salon. I had my own customers, you know, side side job with my own customers. And the salon was up and down as well and um, went back to corporate America. That went back to Chapter 11. And then I heard the Holy Spirit say, go to the beauty school. Like, be what the world? I'm going to the beauty school for a while, you know. And I did, and when I went, they was like, oh, we just hired the teacher, you know, we just keep your stuff on file, we'll call you if we need you. And I didn't, and I forgot to bring my license, but I brought my resume and everything. And he said, well, bring back your license, we just want to keep it on file. And I'm, I said to myself, what am I bringing it back for? You just hired somebody. I'm not doing that. <laughs> and I came home, and like a couple of days went, Again, and I heard the Holy Spirit say, call the school. And so now I'm angry. I'm like, God, why am I calling the school when they just hired somebody? What are you doing? Like, I don't understand. And, but I, out of obedience, I called the school, and the owner answered this time. And he said, come see me tomorrow. I know who you are. I remember you. Oh, my God, I used to work in the office, blah, 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 blah. And I went down, and he said, why didn't you ask him? You know, the man when I was in school looked very old, so I thought, you know, he retired or wasn't with us anymore because he looked very old at the time And uh, when I was in school, and this was years later. And he said, I have a job for you. I'm the owner. He said, I need a night teacher. I was like, okay. <laughs> like, you know, and so I started working in the night, Then he switched me to day. And I've been with this company. He, he retired two years later. He sold to another, um, to a partnership. They were there for about, six years, they, uh, nope, they were there for about 10 years. They sold to another owner, and now I've been a cosmetology instructor going on 16 years in February 2022. Oh, wow. And so I love my job. I love what I do. I love giving back. Um, I really do. You know, um, some health challenges with my legs and things like that, but God graces me to do. And there's times that I'm like, okay, God, you know, I'm ready to leave. I don't want to do this. And God is like, not yet. And so I'm, I'm being obedient once again um, and staying the course. But love my students. I love them. Like, yeah. they become my children, you know. I don't care what color, creed, sex, religion, they all become my children. And years down the line, I – Christmas, they're still calling me. Christmas, they're still sending me gifts. You know, who's having a baby is inviting me. Who's having housewarmings and all these different events that they, I'm still getting invitations. I'm still getting phone calls, checking on me during the pandemic. I was like, wow, I felt so honored because students that I've had from the beginning was checking on me during the pandemic. Like, are you okay? You need anything? I'm like, wow, you got my number? You know, they was like, yeah, we have your number. So, I mean, it's just wonderful. And when God has set you in a place, you know, um, it's just, it's like overwhelming and mind-blowing at the same time because I could have just been like, and you know what the crazy part was? When I was, when I didn't want to call back to the school, I was sending out resumes. I'm qualified in a lot of different things. Nobody was calling me back. And I was really frustrated because I'm like, how nobody's calling me back? Like, I'm qualified. I got, I'm telling you, I was praying, and I said, God, you said you would take care of me. God, you know, and I'm fussing, and I'm yelling, and I'm crying tears, and I'm praying. And he said to me, he said, if I take care of the birds that don't sow, then I'm going to take care of you, you know. And the next day he said, call the school again. And I was like, okay, I'm going to call, you know, with tears. I'm going to call, I'm going to call. But it's just when God has a plan for your life, he has a plan for your life. And if you're willing to follow the blessings of the Lord, make us, of, make us rich and add us no sorrow. Everything is not financial, you know. So am I rich financially? No, I'm not rich financially, but I'm rich in so many other areas in my life. And I'm, I will be rich financially. That, that's, you know, I know what God said. But yeah. so many other things, you know. Like I said, when students can still call you in a pandemic, you know, when they're having children and they're having housewomen, they're having their 
own product lines and businesses and they're opening them and they're inviting you to these things and you can see that you are a part of their process. That is just amazing to me because I've had teachers that was a part of my process that did the same thing for me. And now that I can give back in the same manner, it is just so rewarding. It really is. Amen. And teaching is not easy. You know, for no. people, it's Mm-mm. easy. Teaching is not <laughs> easy. You become, you become exactly what you said, the mother, the counselor, the, yes. the, 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 the nurse, the doctor, <laughs> the, uh, I mean, and, and, and we're talking about teaching adults, not yeah. even teaching children. <laughs> I taught children before. I worked in preschool. I work preschool, you know, you, you get to shape them all because they don't know. You're talking about adults that feel they know and you have to teach them the right way. And they're like, some of them are so defiant, you know, oh, I know how to do this already. Okay, you might know, but you're not doing it the right way. Let me just teach you the right way, you know. And so they come up against you. Some of them are older than you, so they come up against you. You know, um, I don't hide my religion, so if some of them come up against you, you know, but God, I, I just, you know, I have to really say, but God, because he's kept me. He, I mean, I remember starting, starting, you know, as a teacher, and I had to say, you know, at that point, I was like, don't let my Christianity fool you, because you ain't going to come for me, you know, like, we're not going to do that, you know, so I had to really, like, let some of them know, like, don't, don't do that, Mm-mm, that's not how we're going to do this, okay, and so... But to God be the glory, but everyone knows that, you know, I, I, I have a standard, I stand for my religion, but I'm also going to do what I need to do concerning your schooling, I'm going to teach you. But then a lot of times I have to teach them about hygiene, I have to teach them about, you know, relationships, I have to teach them about mothering and, and you know, all mending back family brokenness and, you know, praying for those that are sick and, you know, so it's not just teaching. Trust me, it's not. Yeah. It's ministry. I always said being in the classroom is ministry because you're the only, sometimes you're the only family member that they have, right? Mm-hmm. That only, is the truth. The only mm-hmm. pastor, the only the only everything, right? So yeah. it's very yeah. powerful. And so for doing it for six years, 16 years, oh, my goodness, mm-hmm. <laughs> we have to keep you in prayer <laughs> because <laughs> – it's, again, it's adults, right? Adults. Yeah, yeah. So it's not easy. And that brings me to my next question. And I could imagine why you're a Christian counselor because you use that skill every day. So tell us about mm-hmm. that. Yes, yeah, so um, I have been wanting to go to college for Christian counseling for years. And every time I would find a school, it always had a conflict with my job, the scheduling. And I'm like, God, why, why is this pressed so much on my heart, but it's always a conflict, you know? And I was like, I don't feel that you would give us something and then not give us a way to use it. And so years, I'm, I'm, when I say years, I mean years. And so happened in the pandemic, um, one of my friends called me and she said, hey, you know, this Christian Bible college is having Christian counseling certified um, course. And um, if you want to take it, you know, I don't know what your finances, I don't know your time. I said, girl, I'm stuck in the house. I ain't going nowhere. So time <laughs> is good. I said, let me just check and see about the finances. And so happened I had the finances. That wasn't an issue. And I just was like, God, thank you. Because it felt like, you know, such a weight in a sense because I, I had such a desire to do it. And, um, and I did it for years. I did it. I just wasn't certified to do it, yeah. you know, and I was always counseled, like, Always, you know, married couples, ministers, you know, of the gospel. Um, I mean, I could go down the line of people that always came for counseling. So that's why I was like, God, I don't understand why I can't get the credentials that I need. But during the pandemic, to God be all the glory, I got certified. So I am a certified Christian counselor. Um, and I do counsel, I, you know, I do take appointments and, you know, scheduling and things of that nature. Now we have Zoom, so you don't even have to be in the same state as me. And I have counseled people in different states. I've counseled young, young teenagers, grown adults, men and women, um, to God be the glory. Um, and 
for the men, it's just about what God says. You know, sometimes I just have to be a listening ear because I can't tell you about being a man. You know, I, that I can't. Um, but God just strategically gives me what to say to men because I know sometimes they say, well, how can you counsel men? You know, you're not a man. That is just what God, you know, gives me to say. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, the young girls that's going through what they're going through. And a lot of times the parents are grateful because we know children. They don't always want to come to their parents, you know, but at least they can get some sound doctrine for one and then good counseling that's not going to steer them in the wrong place. Because if they talk to their friends, they're not going to get too much good counseling, you know. So um, I'm grateful even to the parents that reached out to me to say, you know, can you counsel my daughters, you know. I'm grateful for that, that they saw something in me. And then the women, for years, the women, the women in ministry, the first ladies and the preachers and, you know, all of these women, to God be the glory. You know, people that have higher titles than me would call me for counseling, and I don't take it lightly. I just thank God that he allowed me to, you know, be able to do what I do and to help them. And now they're, you know, and I, some of them now are helping other people, which is just fantastic. So the counseling I always knew that was in me because I used to counsel even as a young girl when I was in junior high school, I would go and mentor at the elementary school. So that's always been a part of me as well. Well, it's amazing how our gifts is always right in front of us, right? The thing that we often yeah. overlook. You have been doing it for so long that you're mm -hmm. skilling it. <laughs> yeah. And I do feel I will eventually go back to um, college and just, you know, get all the degrees eventually. And that's, once again, that was a, another conflict of timing you know, even the online schooling, it was a conflict of timing. But I know God has a time for everything. So when he's ready, how he opened up the door for the certification, he'll open up the door for the college degrees to come as well. Amen. Amen. And it's all about God's time. And when it's his time and everything just seems to line up, everything just falls mm -hmm. right in place. Yes. Tell us how to find you. Tell us how to get in, co in connection with you, where to find your books. Give us the names of your books. Okay, I am on Facebook, Instagram, and Clubhouse at Nicole NHW. That's NHW, um, capital. <clears throat> you can email me at prophetess727 at gmail.com. And for any of the books, you can just email me because, um, you know, when we are co-authors, we sell our own books. So if you wanted to get me to sign it, you know, you just email me or send me a message in Messenger or DM me, and um, I will gladly get your information. You know, you can send me the payment, and then I'll ship it out if you're not here in New York. If you're here in New York at some point, you know, it might be a little bit easier, but Definitely, I go to the post office often. So, yeah. Amen. Prophetess, is there anything that's in your spirit that you'll like to, you'll like to release before we go? Yes, I want to tell the listeners on today, this afternoon, this morning, this evening, whatever time, if you're listening to the replay, I want to encourage you to keep on pushing. There are some things that we start, we you know, it doesn't go through at the time. There's some ideas. There's some heart desires. And it seems like, you know, the warfare or the doors are being closed in our face. But I want you to continue to push forward, continue to push forward. Even the things that you've been through, through pain, let that pain produce your purpose. Everything that you heard me say that I did, I went through some pain before that purpose where produce, but yet and still, I did not let it stop me. Don't let the pain stop you. Don't let the closed door stop you. Don't let the, the negative talk from other people stop you. Continue to push forward and birth those dreams, birth those desires. I'm telling you, there is a blessing in your pain. 
when God says all things work together for the good of those that love God and call according to his purpose, I'm telling you, all things work together. And he will make good come out of every negative situation. You heard some of my testimony, but there is so much more. And to God be all the glory that I am yet still here to tell you to push. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. And listen, y'all, and that's, that's, that's the word right there, to push. Nothing comes easy. Everything that the Lord gives us, we do have to push for it. So, Diamonds, thank you for joining us. Remember, when life applied pressure, we shine. We have to go through the pressure to become who God called us to be. Until we meet again, shine on, Diamonds. Shine on. Oh.